Hello and welcome to Rock Paper Shotgun. Although with Valorant out today on PC and free to play, I'm kind of amazed there's anyone around here to say hello to. I know I'm not as exciting as a teleporting wizard with a machine gun, so thanks for joining me. It's the start of June, so what better time to cast our eye over the next 30 days of games? Yes, I know it's also fake E3 this month, but just because the world is salivating over the hits of a distant future doesn't mean there aren't some killer games in the here and now. And here are our picks. Valorant is the obvious place to start. In a nutshell, it's the speed and ferocity of Counter-Strike married to the character powers of Overwatch. Now, as a 35-year-old, a dinosaur in gaming years, I don't have the reaction times to hold my own in CSGO, so the idea of using character abilities to outsmart teenage assassins holds great appeal. Of course, that's only how it works on paper in Riot Shooter. The truth is, a bullet to the head is going to splatter your sneaky plans all over the nearest wall. But the sense of what if that is added with teleports, super jumps and lava puddles really does change the rhythm and tone. It's free to play with cosmetics for sale and has held younger members of the RPS team in trance during its beta. They probably just like killing me to be honest. If you'd like to kill me too, Valorant awaits. left of humanity. Disintegration is an intriguing one. It's the first game from V1 Interactive, a new studio headed by Bungie's former creative art director, Marcus Leto. This is a guy who knows how to create iconic worlds and machinery, but does it have the game to back it up? To its credit, this isn't a simple sci-fi FPS. You command a group of soldiers on the ground RTS style, while you hover overhead in a motorcycle that doesn't care one jot about gravity. You need to strike the balance between ordering your ground troops around while watching out for other airborne bikers that are looking to take you out. It could turn out that this genre hybrid doesn't appease either fan base, but I liked what I played at Gamescom last year and any chance to look at mad sci-fi landscapes is more fun than being stuck in my house where all I see is this massive weed slowly growing outside. I should really do something about that. Many PC games are about building bigger and better spaceships. In Hard Space Shipbreaker, it's about taking a hammer to that hard work. You're a zero-g salvager tasked with breaking down hulking great spacecraft using a variety of laser cutters to slice out precious components and a grappling hook to yank away plating like you are peeling a giant metal orange. I like to think of it as House Flipper, but the house is A, in space, and B, can explode for millions of different reasons. You might saw through a fuel pipe, detonating the whole thing or puncture a hole in the side, decompressing the ship and sending yourself flying into the abyss of space. I love that someone has made a space game where the enemy is space itself, and we'll have a lot more on Shipbreaker when it hits early access on June the 16th. It's taken them a while, but EA are finally showing Command & Conquer the love it deserves with this tasty remastered collection. It includes Tiberian Dawn, Red Alert and their three expansion packs, as well as missions that are exclusive to the console versions. It's all been given a 4K HD remaster that you can switch back to original graphics with the press of a button. Oh, and the music, which are soundtracks that defined mid-90s gaming, are remastered with over 20 tracks getting re-recorded 
recorded by original composer Frank Klepecki and the Tiberian Sons. It's a real love letter to these earlier games, as even a bonus archive of B-roll footage of those majestically hammy cutscenes, and it tidies up the action with a new interface, online matchmaking and full modding support. Is this going to be great? In the words of Red Alert, sooner or later, time will tell. But I've got a feeling it's going to be ace. Tainted Grail is an RPG based on a tabletop game that stormed Kickstarter in 2018 where it raked in close to £5 million. On PC, that flat cardboard becomes a handsome isometric world with a combat system based on stitching together combos from a deck of battle cards. Since it was last seen in Alpha, the combat has had a big visual makeover, now showing the fight playing out with dinky 3D models, so it's less jarring when you switch from world exploration to battle. Battling. It's also getting Conquest Mode, which is the focus of this early access release. This is a blend of the main campaign's mechanics with roguelike elements. Think randomly generated mazes, but with lots of narrative encounters and a village that you build up to help with future runs. Here's hoping that trying to build two substantial game modes at the same time doesn't impact the quality of either. Test it for yourself on June the 25th. The Almost Gone beguiled us when we covered it as part of our Indies Uncovered series earlier in the year. You can click the on-screen link for a proper demo, but in short, this is a narrative-driven puzzle game that sees you assume the role of someone stuck between life and death. In order to figure out how you ended up in limbo, you spin and prod a series of dioramas to reveal the answer to everything. It's unlikely to be 42. Not many big laughs in this one we fear, but despite the macabre topic, the Diddy models are quite cute. You can get to the bottom of this mystery once the game launches on the 25th of June. Beyond Blue is another star of our Indies Uncovered. We first showed it back in April 2019. Again, a link on screen. It's made by E-Line Media, who, having impressed the BBC with their 2015 game Never Alone, were invited to work on Blue Panet the video game. The result is Beyond Blue, an exploration game that attempts to give you an insight into the wondrous creatures that inhabit the ocean. As a deep sea explorer and scientist, Mirai, you swim with dolphins, scan sperm whales, and even marvel at something called the Chilean Devil Ray. Despite their frightening names, you don't need to worry about fish taking a chunk out of you, Beyond Blue is devoid of all danger in fact. The only thing you need to be concerned about is falling into a sedative-like state as you investigate the world's biggest swimming pool. Twin-stick shooter Danger Scavenger is set in a cyberpunk-themed universe where huge corporations are effectively controlling the entire world, so not too dissimilar to our own. The action takes place atop the roofs of huge skyscrapers, but the approach is up to you. Each one of the playable scavengers has their own skills and playstyle, so you can go in all guns blazing if you like, or alternatively, you can apply a bit of strategy and go in with some other guns blazing. It's up to you. The looting and shooting might not redefine video games, but it sure looks like a good time to me. We'll find out just how good a good time it is in the middle of the month. The game most likely to squeeze out a few tears this month is Waking, unless you count the tears of humiliation in Valorant. As you lay in a coma in a hospital bed, you battle inner demons in a randomly generated environment. Just because there's this meditative, soul-searching angle, don't go in thinking this is a walk in the park. The developer likens combat to Dark Souls in terms of challenge, if not style. Your attacks are mostly telekinetic. Could have used that ability against Ornstein and Smau to be fair. But when we said Waking could make you cry, we weren't necessarily talking about its difficulty. The game asked you to pull on your own memories and experiences as you reflect on life and face your fears. Certainly an interesting concept, and one we're hoping developer Jason Oda can deliver on.
Ah, Desperados 3, aka the good, the bad and the sneaky. It's a return to the real-time stealth tactics of the 2001 classic, but this time by Me Me Me, who made the excellent shadow tactics. It's a proper cowboy romp as you use a wide selection of powers to outsmart bandits, freeze time to a coordinate ingenious team takedowns, and pull off audacious assassinations in levels that borrow a lot of tricks from the Hitman games. You can even mind control a chicken if that's your deal. It's all presented in this gorgeous isometric world that feels like having a miniature Westworld living inside your PC. There's a demo on good old games that I really recommend if you have any interest in A. Cowboys or B. Real-time tactics games like Commandos and Desperados 1. It's a genre that doesn't get enough love and this is a brilliant example of it. It's one of my most anticipated games of 2020, let alone June. Ye and indeed, ha! Before we wrap up this video, I also wanted to give a quick shout out to some great games coming to Steam for the first time in June. Sea of Thieves is a return to form for Rare, an online pirate adventure that has evolved into something really special since launch. Steam is also getting Satisfactory and Outer Wilds, which were previous Epic exclusives. One's about building impossibly large production lines, the other about solving the mysteries of a universe before the whole thing goes kaboom. Outer Wilds was my game of the year in 2019 and you'd be mad to miss it. You can also get Heavy Rain, Beyond Two Souls and Detroit Beyond Human on Steam if you enjoy quick time events and quite bad writing. To each their own. Of course, these are but a fraction of the games coming to PC this month, so please do give us your recommendations in the comments below. Personally, I'm going to spend June lurking in the shadows of Desperados 3, I mean it's too hot to stand anywhere else, and bopping my head along to some Red Alert Hell March. Hopefully you will have fun in June, and do give the video a thumbs up and write something nice if you found it useful. Thanks for watching, and bye for now.